Come with me to go behind the scenes with the team at Nothing to learn what they've really built. Why did you decide to make a headphone? Very few people have really sort of cracked over ears. Mm -hmm. And that was quite strange in a way. And so many people have had a go at these. It just felt like there was a really amazing opportunity for us. This is our take on the over ears. What can we really do that feels like a Nothing product? You can see we're kind of playing with stuff. Some of these are quite interesting. Um, so these are your kind of in-house renders? Yeah, yeah. All of this is, yeah. Um, we were sort of on the way there. We looked at these competitors. If you look at Apple, in terms of um, a tech company, they are the standard. But yeah, the price of those is, yeah, whatever, $550 or something. Can we offer an alternative to the AirPods Max? I'd love to learn more about the form factor, the design of it, why certain things are the way they are. This kind of form factor in general. Now we've got like so much kind of real estate to play with. So yeah. we really wanted to take advantage of that and the silhouette trying to find like something that we can own that no one else has quite done yet. That very simple first read, what's actually inside um, the ear cups and how we can maybe use the form and the, and the materiality to kind of represent those kind of key key parts of the, of the product. How does it feel to finally have this kind of baby here. We're really proud of this. This is the first product we've done at Nothing on our own. You know, when we when we first joined, Teenage Engineering had done all this like sensational work. Even though we did ear A ourselves and we we did, you know, phone 3A, phone 3A Pro, the DNA is kind of there. This one there was there, there wasn't anything for us to reference at all. Because the goal is big. Yeah. It feels worth it. It was really interesting to learn how Nothing brought their brand DNA to a new category of products like Over Ears. Frank and Seb then walked me through the weird ways in which they find inspiration. I then finally got to ask, why are there no glyphs? We kind of wanted our first flagship product to have that same quality as we do on our phone. It's got that like glass and solid feeling of that when you f initially touch it, you're like, oh, this feels like quite precious. Mm -hmm. And because we wanted to achieve that wafer thin stack up. So what we ended up needing to do was sort of like split the battery instead of lying it on top of the driver. So the battery's split in two? What? It's got yeah. two batteries, yeah. Yeah, it wouldn't have been, it, like a single battery would have been too, uh, too fat, really, to fit in, uh, in this. It's actually quite simple when you look at it from this top view here. Starting in the transparency region, like we wanted that to kind of reflect a little bit what kind of product this is. Uh, over your headphones, very much centered around acoustics and its quality and like all of that, like at the center is where the, the acoustics section of the product lies. Why are there no glyphs on the headphones? The purpose of the glyph is to provide notification to the user when you're wearing it. It's giving information to everyone else. And we kind of thought that was counterintuitive to the philosophy of like why we are doing glyphs. Every product should have what a glyph is to a headphone. And I think what that is, is the interactions. What was the most difficult thing to overcome? Everything is sort of like interconnected. It's like the stiffness of that is too hard that maybe needs to be adjusted. You can't just change one parameter and every time we change something, we, we go through that rig to, to test it. Sorry, what's the rig? The head scruncher. So what? Can you just explain what this is? Because it looks a bit scary. So this is a, a setup that we built here. Mount the, the headphones like this. It didn't only help us measure what we had on Elekid here, but also measure all of like the, the competition. We were able to kind of like draw out a spectrum of where we felt we needed to land in terms mm. of camping for so that Elekid would be uh, as comfortable as possible. So not only did they build headphones, they built a custom testing rig from scratch. It was crazy. Franklin gave me a behind the scenes look at some of the designs that didn't make it to production. Very early on, we knew that we kind of wanted to highlight that acoustic volume. And here's just like a lot of different ways. So where do you drive inspiration from? It always starts from a sketch. Mm -hmm. like, and the inspiration, like we get it from a lot of different places. It could mm -hmm. be like fashion accessories, architecture. It could be like interesting shapes that we, that we found. This is like a really good board to show how so many of the early kind of design decisions can be made in the, in the 2D space. Each quadrant uh, kind of highlights a, a different layout mm. and like, as a result, a different design that you would get uh, depending on how you decided to kind of like, arrange everything on the inside. Next up is the conversation I was most excited to have. The controls. I mean, five buttons. Most headphones have two, three at most. But Tom and Joseph walked me through why they made that choice and why they've included a tiny secret button. Most importantly, 
We've got our on-off switch. Yeah. Which you would expect would be a standard, but it isn't. And we, we were very excited about bringing that back. We also have our volume roller, which allows continuous control of volume. And it also clicks to play and pause music. And you can hold it to trigger the active noise cancellation. We also have what we call the paddle. And that is a really lovely way to primarily skip forward with music and skip back. But also on supported services, you can actually hold it and scrub through audio. We've got a Bluetooth button, obviously, we know what that does. Lastly, we've got this button on the face of the product. We wanted to do something else, and we're always looking for what are the ways that we can nail the fundamentals, but then do something new and, and exciting on top. So we called it channel hop, like you're changing channels. Your phone is remembering the services that you listen to, and at the press of the button, you can swap between your music service or your mm. podcast service. So this is a way that without getting your phone out of your pocket, you can just be focused on, on what you're doing and still change what you're, what you're listening to. And this feature, it really it mirrors the functionality of the glyphs in some ways. People assume because glyphs are such a visible part of our identity that every product is going to have glyphs on it. Mm -hmm. But actually, I kind of think that channel hop is kind of like, that could be the glyphs of this headphone. The glyphs get you away from some of the noise on your phone. And with phone three, now you can interact with them. And this is doing the same. It's allowing you to interact and control your music without having to go deep into your phone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. AirPods Max is a good example. You've got so much real estate, but they're using interactions that you would have on earbuds where you're very space constrained. And triple tapping is, it's not the easiest of interactions. And when you've got this much real estate, why limit yourselves to mm. two buttons? How did you land on this style of button? We tried loads of things. We can pull out some, some prototypes. I think we made maybe 10 or so of these functional prototypes, exploring different layouts and different buttons. So though we had this application that could play sound or media. Oh, is that connected? Mm. Yeah. What? So we tested these for a few weeks, I think, mm -hmm. trying different button layouts and different controls and... We'd be walking around the office with these janky looking things, yeah. no offense, on our, on our heads. There's then the question of, well, how should each of these things feel specifically? What's the resistance? Right. How far does that move? So we go into to great lengths to make sure it feels exactly how we want it to feel, how it clicks and in just the right way. We'd set out a set of guiding principles for the product and one of them was full control of your audio. We don't want to compromise on how many buttons there are mm. and what they do and be quite protective over the functions that they have to just have this core interaction system for the most important things. I want people to say when they see it for the first time, oh, that's a lot of buttons. Mm. So we've heard that internally as well when we're trying to make the case for this control system. When people put them on and use it, it should feel like just one cohesive system. Mm. We always want to surprise people as a, as a company, as a design team. I've seen probably 50 community renders of nothing headphones and none of them look like that, right. which I'm pleased about. Yeah. And, I, and I would have been uncomfortable if anyone had got close, because mm. we have to keep people guessing. And, and if people think they've got us pinned down, oh yeah, flashy lights, no, you've yeah. missed the point. Next up was Lucy, who had the biggest challenge yet. There's an actual theory behind the colours and material they landed on. And once you hear it, the whole product makes a lot more sense. We've got a black and a white. Okay. It's quite straightforward. Yeah. When we were bringing all of these different materials together, Aluminium has this natural sort of silver colour and we wanted to make sure that that felt right with essentially solid colours elsewhere. As you can see, it's got so much visual complexity. Mm. For us, the whole point is that this feels harmonious as an object when you look at it. So this tone of grey that's here on this top deco is the same as here, which right. is not the same mm. as the top. And then we have these like darker greys that are picked up elsewhere. So it feels very harmonious, mm. but is actually really complex and, and it doesn't match. Mm -hmm. It would be quite easy to say, okay, well, we're gonna do this aluminium shell and then everything is gonna be the same color, but actually it's not. And we've made that decision to mm. have these parts that you know, give you a bit of visual lightness at the top, mm -hmm. um, draw your eye down to the ear cup, which is kind of where the magic happens. Mm. So we have that 
visual complexity that we have on a much smaller product, mm -hmm. on our in-ear products, we've actually been able to take that and translate it onto something that goes on your head without you looking like a Wally. What was the biggest challenge when designing these and working with the CMF? The sheer volume of newness mm. was the biggest challenge. Loads of new materials, suppliers, working with things that we've never made before. Mm -hmm. Really complex, but I think got there. Next, I went to check out how audio experts Kef were involved. They met me at their bespoke listening room where I got the chance to experience sound in a whole new way before finally talking about the tuning. I feel like a kid at Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> That blew me away. I can never go back to enjoying music the same way. Prafmesh gave me the full breakdown of how Kef's unique tuning process is baked into Nothing Headphone One. What we're aiming to achieve with the listening experience of Headphone One is that we want the listener to feel immersed, like they're in a room listening to a pair of loudspeakers. We also want to make sure that in terms of the details that you can pick out, they're clear, they are faithful, mm. and they're exactly how the artist intended, and nothing more. The challenge was to make sure that the stock tuning or out-of-the-box performance was something that could service everyone. Mm -hmm. But equally, we understand the value of personalization. Going for a product that is distinctively you mm. in terms of its design and visual language and we wanted to carry that on in the sound. So the way we've done that is we've enabled a vast variety of customization within the app. Wow. You can make it truly your own. Hold up, before I forget, we're giving away one pair of headphone one to one of our subscribers. So go comment below for a chance to win.